All right, what's going on guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing my movie review. This one will contain spoilers for X-Men Apocalypse. So yeah, spoiler warning if you guys haven't seen X-Men Apocalypse yet. I imagine most of you probably have. And I want to apologize for posting such a late review. Uh, I finally got a chance to watch it. Been dying to see it, but I was just so backed up and busy with uh, just work and everything. And the other reviews that we've been you know, doing in the channel, the different shows that have been out and everything, that it got pushed back for me. But I finally got a chance to, uh, to see it today. And just, man, absolutely loved it. I mean, I've been a big fan of X-Men, of course, since I was a kid. And I've even got some, you know, X-Men figures and stuff. Here's Apocalypse, Apocalypse, come the Apocalypse. I've got all kinds of them. So, <laughs> so I love X-Men, man. Huge X-Men fan. And I'm really impressed with this one, man. I mean, this is a weird case because I, I saw all the reviews online. I saw that people were unhappy with the movie. And I, I don't know why. I don't really know. I mean, I haven't, I, I hadn't really gotten into too many of their um, complaints about the movie. I've seen a few of the complaints, but to be honest, I, I don't think they're all that warranted. And uh, you know, we can get into that a little bit. But I'll just mainly say, because this is supposed to be a review, that. Um, I mean, you know, I think everybody has a certain favorite X-Men character and they bring a lot of characters into the movies and sometimes not everybody gets to shine. You know, if you have Jubilee in it and people are upset, oh, Jubilee didn't get to sparkle, sparkle, you know, <laughs> this kind of thing. I think we're even lucky that Jubilee is even in it because she's... I mean, she's a real X-Men character, but she's like, uh, you know, she's in the X-Men animated series. That's her biggest, probably her biggest thing in the comics. She's like a vampire now and stuff. Um, so that's fun. But, you know, I mean, it's, you, you can't satisfy everybody when you have such an, like an ensemble type cast. And I really feel like Brian Singer just, he brought his A game to this one, man. I would say, just like Days of Future Past, if I had to rank the X-Men movies, I think the absolute best one still would probably be Days of Future Past because it fixes the whole franchise. Like, it fixes all the prior movies and X3 and what a clusterfuck that was. It's It, it, it like, fixes it, brings uh, things back into place and into balance and kind of creates sort of the, uh, the time, a new time stream, which is what we're kind of seeing here. Uh, after uh, Days of Future Past being my favorite, this this one might be my second, maybe third. It's hard because, you know, there's six and you've got the Wolverine movies and Deadpool and I guess you can count him too because um, he's he's technically, uh, you know, in X-Men from uh, the comics and everything. Um, but I mean, you know, First Class was great. It was much better than I thought it was going to be. It was a great movie too. And X2 is probably the best out of the first three uh, of the X-Men trilogy, the original uh, trilogy one back when we thought we weren't going to see any more of those X-Men movies, like they were dead, they were done, they're going to reboot it or something. And uh, we found out that they actually did something more interesting than just reboot it. They create, they kind of created a new time stream and kind of uh, combined the old with the new. And just, man, I I really love what they've done with the X-Men franchise and, and Singer coming back and fixing it all and everything. It's just been incredible since Days of the Future Past, for sure. So, uh, Apocalypse. So this is... Getting to see one of the X-Men's greatest foes, their biggest bads, so to speak. If you have Avengers, you have like Thanos, you know, um, or, or Superman, the Justice League, you have Darkseid. You know, Apocalypse is like X-Men's version of that kind of uh, big bad villain. He's one of... He's, he's like you're kind of, if you if you want to classify mutants in terms of levels, they've kind of mentioned that in the movies a couple times, like in X3, like Omega level mutant, you know, where it's like he's he's God level, like he is beyond what you would consider to be like just a mutant where he's he's got, you know, not just like one power set, he's got all kinds of different, you know, abilities and powers and things that he can do and um, the ability to kind of uh, bring under his wing others in, in the movie version and, and kind of lead like that and, and, and enhance their powers and kind of he's just he's he's extremely well-rounded he's like a one he's like a god he's a one man kind of x-men like all, if you put all their powers into one type of creature into one mutant apocalypse is, is like maybe that and more so i really liked um the movie version of Apocalypse, I thought he was really, really cool because it must be difficult to kind of bring some of these comic book, uh, you know, elements to real life, to live action. And, and Apocalypse has got some really 
really imaginative abilities, like the ability for him to grow, like in the comics, you know, he'll grow huge and stuff, and he'll, like, you know, smash down at people and stuff. He'll grow the size bigger than a city and stuff, or he'll turn his arm into, like, a big cannon and just blast away and stuff, and he'll be, like, invulnerable. And he's, he's, he's definitely not an easy villain to tackle for the movies. Even Magneto or somebody like that would be a lot easier to tackle than somebody like Apocalypse, who would be really, really hard to kind of translate all those abilities into the, uh, the movie. Um, but I feel like they, they, they took some liberties with it for sure, but they created an interesting version of Apocalypse that I really liked because the way he comes across is he comes across as kind of, especially to those who, his four horsemen and the people that he's trying to take under his wing, he comes across as like a fatherly figure. He refers to them all as, you know, as children. And he's got kind of this like deep, ominous, changing voice, which, which will go from like deep and ominous to sometimes like, like raging and everything they've built will fall. And you see everything just, uh, just kind of like being pulled up and, and disintegrating in the air and everything. And he's just got, oh, what an, what an amazing uber villain in this, in this movie, man. I mean, some of the scenes. I mean, I, I guess I can understand some people's complaints that sometimes they might just want to see him, you know, Hulk smash people and stuff, just come at him and just start, just start crushing people and stuff. But I feel like with X-Men, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, well, anybody can really do that. But he's kind of like a level beyond that where he won't even put that much effort into killing people. He will just, you know, use things as simple as, as sand to go through and cut all their heads off. Or he'll just, he'll just kind of, uh, kind of change reality and have them kind of, uh, you know, like uh, uh, mold into things. Like mold into sand or shrink into the. I like when you do like all the guys fall into the ground and then, and then, and then come back to, uh, to parts. So like a creator, you know, this kind of God type uh, villain. Man, really cool. Really like what they what they did with him. And also, even the giant part, they were able to kind of incorporate how he's able to kind of grow and 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 become like a you know a big bad so to speak, kind of literally like a with figures called like build a figure, like huge you know giant man type thing. But they use it in kind of the shadow realm when he's facing off against Charles when he's doing having like a, a, a psychic battle with Charles and with Gene. You, you see him kind of turn into his bigger form there so they even found a way to kind of translate that from the comics to the movie which is a little tricky because you don't want it to look ridiculous and maybe that's the reason why they don't use jubilee for all that much because uh, can you just imagine her in her your yellow jacket like like trying to sparkle apocalypse or something? i don't know why people are pissed like what do you want to see you want to see her try to sparkle kill apocalypse like what is that going to do aside from maybe distract him for like a tenth of a second um and it's man they just went they went really big with the movie and and uh, especially the final battle. And, and this movie has kind of two climaxes. And I think that might be part. It, it's pretty long, too. It's over over like two hours, almost two and a half hours. Um, and they kind of have like a climax in the middle of the movie, right? And then they have one at the end. So it's kind of kind of an interesting kind of uh, people people complain because it, it kind of starts off slow and everything. You're getting to know all the characters. You get your building and you got the kind of tragedy stuff at the beginning with Magneto and everything. And it goes up to the point where, uh, which I was really impressed with because I didn't see that coming. That Apocalypse would be like uh, would would sense that Charles is there, and he kind of like when he looks at the screen. And he sees like, oh, hello, I see you. And then he and then he goes at him, right? And he starts to starts to kind of get take over. Uh, and I love I love the the quote. I've never felt power or, or anything like this before. Um, you know, power like this before. And you see his eyes start turning black, and it's like he starts to kind of uh, fight him mentally, and, and he's able to kind of even uh, over overpower Charles in that way, even with Cerebro. Um, so that is like one kind of climax with the movie, I want to say. And then, of course, the ending is is another. So uh, it, after that that first climax, about midway through, I think a lot of people, I've seen them kind of be, were a little bit upset because they thought maybe that was kind of the end or something. And then it kind of comes back down and then goes up. And that kind of that kind of um, sort of layout for a movie can make the, the after the middle part feel a little bit like uh, tiresome, like, you know, okay, is it over? Oh, no, we still got, like, another hour left or something. <laughs> you know, so, uh, so I think maybe the structure. But, you know, I, I, if they had to do it to bring Weapon X in, now we're getting into big-time spoilers, I'm okay with that. You know, I am perfectly fine with that to get to see Hugh Jackman return as Weapon X with even the long-ass mullet hair shit, like the 80s freaking Wolverine. They take the headgear off, you see his hair, it's like it's like flapping in the wind when he runs out and stuff. Oh my god, amazing. When you see him walk out, you hear him grunting and animal, there's some kind of animal in there. <laughs> awesome. 
Uh, and then Cyclops, like, you know, hope we don't see him again. Jeez. <laughs> Uh, again, just really just the detail and the amount of thought that they put into kind of having the, the, the past and this new time stream that has now been created without kind of the sentinel apocalyptic future and X3 and everything like that. Um, getting to see kind of kind of a, a new style of it too to go through is just uh, it's yeah, man the amount of attention they put and some people say well that didn't happen in the comics blah 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 again this is a new time stream and like like I said um, you know they they're take they're they're doing their own kind of thing with it so it's not just page to movie and you couldn't translate some of those things anyway they would just look so ridiculous it wouldn't make any sense but let's uh, so let, let's get back on to the layout of the movie. So you have that and uh, the Quicksilver part in there after kind of uh, the Charles versus Apocalypse battle and kind of the middle climax and, and you know, Quicksilver kind of coming out of nowhere in one of my favorite scenes I think I've ever seen in a movie. Uh, just like the Weapon X scene as well, too. This one just totally had me on the floor. I was just, I was laughing so hard when they brought, I was so happy to see them use Quicksilver so much in this movie. I mean, I love the slow-mo stuff they do with Quicksilver. If you've seen on YouTube, you can watch from Days of Future Past. Somebody posted it where there's no s- slow-mo in the scene where he uh, he he they he saves Magneto. They they, they kind of get Magneto out from Days of Future Past from his uh, imprisonment. And when he go he goes through the kitchen and he kind of knocks everybody down and does the whole thing after they fire and moves all the bullets and everything. When you don't see it with slow-mo and it's just like regular, it's like nothing. But then when you when you see all the effort they put into doing all the slow-mo and everything, you get to see the slow-mo version. It's like, wow, that is so much better than just seeing everybody fall down and, and have Quicksilver just like standing there afterwards and have Wolverine say, thanks, kid. Um, in this one, they even took it to another level because you get to see a couple of those, you know, a couple of those amazing scenes. We see kind of the bumblebee and it kind of freezes and you, you hear the uh, uh, sweet dreams, 80s music, man. <laughs> You see his shoes and shit, and then he comes out. You got the dog with the pizza in the mouth. Oh my god, so funny! The water and the goldfish, like you know. Oh man, he just starts throwing people. He wraps somebody in a mattress or something and throws. (laughs) He puts the the sheets up. Oh my god, that was just so much fun to see that. And and also like at the end as well too. They used it good too, and he starts attacking Apocalypse. And you know, see that's that's where the power of Apocalypse kind of comes in, where he has to deal with all these different X-Men that have these different abilities and he Apocalypse really does not have a weakness like he doesn't have a weak spot where they can kind of easily beat him it takes them all together to have to go at him and I was really satisfied with the ending seeing Gene have to be the one to finally kind of come in and as everybody's attacking him together give that final boost and shut him down because Apocalypse is one of those characters that's so powerful. It's like, how are they going to beat him? And I really love that they decided to use the Phoenix Force, the Phoenix, to be the thing that overpowers uh, Apoc. Because, I mean, it's like, how are they going to beat him? He's so good. And I, I think that's probably all of them working together with Gene releasing Phoenix. You know, it was just beautiful scene you see like the explosion of the bird and everything i mean as a big time x-men fan since i was a kid it was just amazing to see i thought it was incredible and uh, they brought in a lot of characters not everybody got to look that epic archangel looked cool didn't kind of didn't do a whole lot i mean he was kind of beaten by nightcrawler sort of and you know and all that and psylocke was in there too and you had olivia Munn who played her which was Awesome. And, you know, they, they can't use everybody that much, you know, because there's so many. It was already like two hours and 20 minutes. And, and you, you, I think they did. I think they made good choices. But again, this is X-Men. There are so many characters in it now that not everybody is going to get a chance. Every character you like is going to get a chance to do all that much like Psylocke, like, um, you know, Storm, too, I guess. Who, By the way, if I had to complain about it, I didn't really like the person they, they chose for Storm. I mean, she was okay. And she's playing kind of like a villain role for Storm, and like a, a young version of Storm in this universe. So yeah, I guess it was okay. You know, of course, Halle Berry, it's been so long since she was in it and stuff. I guess you kind of have to use somebody different. She was okay. But everybody else I liked as younger versions. I liked the younger Nightcrawler. I liked, um, you know, Cyclops. I liked every, I liked every, especially the Cyclops. I thought it was great. And, of course, Sophie Turner as, as Jean. I mean, as a big fan of Game of Thrones, that was like a perfect cast. I mean, that was, that's just like, 
just nailed it. Perfect cast, I think, because I think she's she's fantastic for Jean, even though she might not look that much like uh, Famica uh, Jansen. Um, it's probably not how you say her name, but that's <laughs> my best efforts. Uh, it can't always work out 100%. You can't have everybody look identical, exactly like you know the other actor and actress. They, they do the best they can. So uh, really what I'm saying is I love the movie overall. I, you know, I, I really felt it was tragic. I watched it with, with Jess, and she loved the scene too. It was really sad with, uh, with Magneto and that losing his kind of new family. He's trying to made a, make a normal life. Very tragic that he, he, he saves somebody and ends up giving himself away. And then uh, next thing you know, it's like you know everything is taken away from him. So you can definitely feel for him. And you know I, I felt like... I just, I just felt like they made some really good choices with the movie. As a fan of the X-Men, I was really satisfied with it. And I just like, I remember looking forward to some of the early X-Men movies as such a huge X-Men fan and kind of being disappointed sometimes with like, um, you know, X3 or X2. You know, it was, it was really well done. You get to see Wolverine in, in the mansion and that and kicking some striker ass, which was awesome. Um, but, you know, I, I felt like after X2, maybe I was a little bit disappointed because I wanted to see some more X-Men characters. And Nightcrawler was cool in that one, too. There's some awesome stuff in that one. Uh, and a lot of people regard it as the best out of the original trilogy, which, it, yeah, probably is. Um, but, you know, it, it's hard for them to bring in everybody and to use everybody, uh, you know, well in the X-Men movie franchise. And not everybody translates well. So, uh, loved the stuff with Magneto. Loved Apocalypse as a villain. Thought he was great. Loved all the kind of God uh, comparisons and, and him referring to himself as like a creator, as, as like a God. And uh, or a false god, and uh, as uh, you know, um, Charles kind of looks at him as it just really, really loved it. And he betrayed, and then in the end, he's betrayed again. You know, he's he's, he's like uh, in, a, in a cycle. He's constantly being betrayed. The only thing I'm I'm kind of thinking about is like, what does he mean at the end when he says all is revealed? Is it revealed that he's he's not the most powerful? That Charles is right? That uh, by yourself you can't? It's kind of like having one person or or one entity rule the world. You know. One person can never really rule the entire world uh, with an iron, iron, you know, fist, and not have other people rebel, have other people want to have their own agendas and take over, betray them, this kind of thing. So, um, all in all, I love the movie, man. I thought the graphics were incredible. You know, Magneto with all the stuff lying around, the magnetic fields and everything. Mystique, that's something I haven't talked about. You know, uh, Jennifer Lawrence's Mystique again. She has been way better than she should be. I mean, if you guys, if you don't know this. If you read the X-Men comics, Mystique is not really that big of a character, you know, in the X-Men comics. She's a villain, yeah. She's like a psychic villain. She's either, you know, actually Apocalypse. She's she's on Apocalypse side a lot in the comics. Or, you know, Brotherhood, uh, Evil Mutants, this kind of thing. But she's not really like a huge character. And the X-Men franchise has turned her into like this this star, you know, which is, which is amazing to see. And I think it's worked out really well for them. At the end, she's like getting ready to train them all. And they're all ready. You got Cyclops. He's got his... Sweet ass visor. You got um, everybody else. Their storm becoming a good guy at that part, and uh, them training Quicksilver. It's like, oh man, it's so amazing. So we don't really have any word on you know uh, what they're going to do next or how long it's going to be. We've got the after credit sequence, which um, uh, with the Essex Corp. So um, some people have complained. A lot of people are saying like Mister Sinister, this kind of thing at the end of the after credit sequence. Um, you know, it's Apocalypse is about as big of a villain as you can possibly get with X-Men. So whoever they choose next is not going to feel as big in scale as Apocalypse. I don't think uh, that's even really possible. If you consider just Magneto, you know, as a villain for like X-Men 1 or some of the others that they've had, Striker and things like that, they kind of, they, they, they pale in comparison to someone like Apocalypse, which is why I think it's so difficult for them to do a movie on him. But I think they did a great job with it as, as best as they could have done. So um, yeah, right now on Rotten Tomatoes, it has like, uh, let's see, it was like 44 or something. Let me see. Uh, oh, it's 47%. Um, that's weak, man. That's a pretty weak score for it. I definitely wouldn't give it that. I mean, I personally would put this one at like an 8.8 out of 10. But that's me because I'm a big X-Men fan. You know, I, I, I love uh, the franchise. And I'm just so happy they're still they're still making X-Men movies all these years later. Like, I never imagined we were going to see movies like this from X-Men that were this big in scale, that included this many different characters, and uh, we got to see some so many amazing uh, special effects that they do, Nightcrawler and everybody else. Oh, my God, just absolutely uh, epic for uh, fans of X-Men, for sure. At least for me, anyway. That was me, though. I don't know. Other people are disappointed with it. They're upset at it. 
you know, everybody's got their own take on it. For me, I definitely wasn't. I definitely loved it. Still think maybe Days of Future Past is the best one, but uh, this one I think is certainly one of uh, one of the best they've done and felt huge in terms of scale to me. Um, I was a fan of the comics and uh, being, you know, uh, a fan of X-Men for, for so long and always wanting to see, you know, something of this kind of magnitude, of this kind of scale in live action and never feeling like we, we've ever re- really seen something this kind of big in terms of live action, I think. And uh, because of that, with all the characters and everything they did, uh, I was really satisfied with it. So, man, crazy movie. I was so happy to see it. And uh, I loved it, man. I mean, I might be different from everybody else on line right now for this, but I... I loved it. I loved Apocalypse. I don't know what everybody's beef is. I really don't. Maybe you guys can explain it. If you hated it, write your comments below. Let me know why, because I'm interested. I want to hear like why people hated it if you did, because uh, I, I just loved it, man. I thought it was great, man. Really cool. So uh, there's my review for X-Men Apocalypse. Sorry to keep you guys waiting for it if you were looking up for it. Um, you know, kind of been slacking this year on, on the movie review, so I apologize for that, guys. Uh, but yeah, if you like this video, as usual, guys, you know what to do. Please thumb it up. You can also share and favorite. And if you're new and you want to subscribe, if they do any more future X-Men movies, whenever we hear anything, of course, I'll, I'll do some videos on it, let you guys know what we're, what we're looking at. But uh, I'll do reviews for future ones as well, too. So if you want to sub, bottom left, go ahead and click subscribe. That's it for this video. I'll see you guys again real soon. As always, this is Trev. I'm saying peace. See you guys.